Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. My name is Eric Elliott. I'm the Advanced Hunter Education Coordinator with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. I've been a wildlife officer for 26 years. I'm super thankful for my job and I love serving people and I'm glad to be with you tonight. As far as our topic tonight, it's uh, we're gonna be talking about what's what's in your backpack. So the older I get, the more this is on my heart and the more I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm thinking about the weight of our my pack. It seems like things are getting heavier. Um, it's my pack, I should say, and my body, I guess. Um, but it's just something that, um, especially the more years you have in the field, the more you see um, the unexpected. And so we should be prepared for that and be responsible hunters and be prepared for uh, the normal and sometimes the abnormal. Um, so our presenter tonight is Mike Pettingle. I'm super thankful that you're with us, Mike. Thanks, this isn't your first webinar. Thanks so much for serving the public the way you do. Um, Mike is the owner and operator of the Personal Protection Academy in Southern California and they provide firearms instruction and CPR instruction for the folks down there. So Mike is a hunter education instructor himself, and he's also a certified firearms instructor for the California Department of Fish, excuse me, California Department of Justice. So as a U.S. paratrooper, Mike, you've done your fair share of uh, hacking backpacks and so you've got some experience on what to bring and maybe what to leave in your garage so tell me what's in your backpack mike sure um uh, welcome everybody i hope uh hope we get to a point where um like eric said i really want this to be a dialogue and i want you guys with respect of course challenge me right throw some of this out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work off of the concept of a day pack. Now, airborne army paratroopers, that's all good, well and good. Those of you that went through the training for the army in Benning, uh, you know that there's a point where you literally are strapped down with uh, uh, almost as much gear as you weigh, right? We're not going for that. That's not our, that's not our gear. That's not our goal. Um, we're going for what do we need? What's, in, what, what is, what's imperative, what's life-saving, what's life-altering, and what's comfort, right? And what we're looking at is a day pack. So I'm talking about my day pack, right? This is, this is my day pack, and this is what I'm going to take with me uh, almost all the time, even on a backwoods or um, a, a, a multi-day uh, uh, hunt, it's going to be something like this. Um, so this is my buddy. This goes with me everywhere. Okay. But what's going in that pack? Um, and what I want to do is I want to classify into three levels. Okay. Level one, level two, level three. What is level one? Level one is what I view as it basically never goes out of my backpack. I mean, half this stuff here, and I've got a table next to me, I'm gonna be bringing stuff up and talking about it. Half this stuff, I would take to Walmart. I mean, um, it's it's just, it's life-saving. It's, it's stuff that I just can't do without. So it stays in my backpack, no matter what the season. Um, once a year, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna see if everything's in functioning, working order. Uh, making sure that I've got what I need on me uh, for my for my trip. So level one is I'm not going if I can't take this stuff, right? Unless I'm shooting just a couple of feet off of someone's back porch, I am taking this stuff with me, okay? Level two is, yeah, this is going to make stuff a bit easier. Um, and some of it, I look at some of it and I found a, a kind of a difficulty myself of saying what goes into level one, what goes into level two, what goes into level three. And um, that's where I want you guys to argue with me. I want you guys to 
to say, no, 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 I wouldn't put that in level one. I'd put that in level two. What are you crazy? That doesn't go in level two. That goes in level one. Or Mike, what about X? You forgot X. That's got to be in there too. Yeah, let's talk about that stuff because I want to learn from you guys too. So level one is can't do without. Level two is that's going to make things a whole lot easier. And level three is, yeah, I'll take it. Um, and I don't really need it. I can get by without it. But hey, man, I'm 54 and maybe my hands are a little bit more shaky. Maybe my butt's a little bit more tender and I'm going to I'm going to make things uh, um, a little bit easier on myself. OK, so let's start going through uh, what is level one? What is what can't we do without? OK, um, so I'm a firearms instructor. I'm a concealed weapons uh, instructor. Uh, I have a concealed carry permit, um, uh, three permits that give me reciprocity in 39 states. You guys, I don't walk to the mail without a firearm on me. And so I am not going out into the woods uh, amongst both four-legged predators and two-legged predators, um, I'm going to have something to defend myself. So I'm uh, first thing is I'm not going out with without my firearm. Nope, this isn't the one I use, but I'm not going to be flashing uh, guns on on YouTube. So um, this is my analog for for my firearm. Um, check into the laws. The laws are pretty nice for when you're hunting. I'm not going to quote the laws. I'm not an attorney. I'm not your attorney. Um, but, um, having a firearm is, is, is definitely something I'm going to take. Um, and it's going to be, uh, for me, it's always going to be a 45 caliber. Um, so, uh, I'm going to make sure that I have, um, uh, this loaded and chambered, and I'm going to have another magazine with me. So that's, uh, number one. So then let's talk about, um, uh, our, our utility knives. And this is just a cheap utility knife. Right. Um, it's it's nice and it's a probably a good Amazon special. Um, it's got a it's got a good blade. Right. And it's got um, the ability to cut um, paracord or, or it's actually intended to cut seat belts and that's intended to break windshields. But um, that's neither here nor there. And if you you know the cliche, right, somebody somebody requote the cliche cliche for me because I'm going to mess it up. Um, one is none and two is one. Right, so you've got to be prepared. So guess what? Two foldable utility knives, right? So I'm gonna have uh, gonna have two of those with me, and they're always in my backpack. Um, dozens and dozens of things that you got to use you can use for that. Now I've got other knives in here that we're gonna talk about, but that's just that's with me at all times. Um, then, uh, so my wife's a nurse. Um, I, I'm an ex marathoner and. Um, uh, in our house, hydration is king. Electrolytes are king. And so we're going to go with um, electrolyte tabs of some sort. This is, um, I'm not promoting this brand. Um, for me, it's its the right brand because it doesn't have caffeine in it. Um, and it was hard for me to find electrolyte tabs that, um, that didn't have caffeine in them. Um, so this is something I'm always going to take with me and uh, make sure that I'm not only uh, hydrating with fluids, but keeping electrolytes up. Um, you're on the you're on the property um, uh, uh, early, and you need you need the the to to see what's going on. So having a decent utility knife, uh, I'm sorry, decent utility flashlight is going to be important. Um, this is a cheapy. Uh, I've invested uh, money in some some really nice ones. I've got I'm kind of a kind of a gear junkie. And um, so this is just going to be a, a pretty good basic one. I've got these all over the house, uh, but this is in my backpack. I'm always going to be in there. Um, then uh, let's go again with uh, a, a half a dozen reasons for this, but you're going to need to create fire um, and having an option. And, and And there's a lot of great options out there. Um, cotton balls and Vaseline and, and um, uh, waterproof matches and all this. And, I, and I'm going for for this unit right here, right? And it's, um, it's you're scraping off right onto your, onto your substance and then you're launching it and getting your fire going. So this for me has, I, I've tried to start fires 12 different ways. And this to me is, this has been the easiest one for me, but that's something I'm going to have. It's going to be for camp. It's going to be 
for cooking, it's going to be for survival as well. Yeah. How about if that, when that gets wet, Mike, is that an issue at all? That's why I dig this one. Yeah. Um, because snow, water, it just produces. Um, there's there's a couple of other options that I've used that are that are that are good, but that's why I dig this one because you can pull it out of out of water and it and it does it does what it does. Yeah. Um, so it's so a, it's somebody's a, asking about what's the name of that fire starting tool. Uh good question. Um I see I gotta put my glasses on to actually read this one. Um the brand name doesn't excite me, but it's a, uh, this one's a, yeah, Bapple, B-A-P-L-E. Okay. All right. But you're, um, this has got a, it's a hard, it's a hard rod. And then it's a, a simple striker. There's, if there's one of these, there's a hundred of them on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, but I think to me, this is something that works really well. Yeah. Um, okay, so then this is kind of generic, um, but obviously you've got to have your calls. Um, it is um, it is uh, turkey season is what I'm heading into. So I've got my I've got my pot right, and then of course I've got to have my sand because if you've ever been turkey hunting, you know the dew is going to screw this up, and you need your sandpaper right. So so I've got that, and I've got. I've got my my other calls uh, for turkey season and, and actually one leftover. Uh, one's a dying rabbit for coyote uh, at any time. Those are always in my backpack. But you've got to make sure you have your calls. That's going to make things easier. Um, kind of one uh, overlooked, uh, Eric and I were talking about, I, I, I think the kind of the cliche of, uh, of the hunter is uh, the guy or gal that's got uh, their, their three or four rounds in their pocket. It's all I need. It's a good day, right? Um, uh, we're not going to do a lot of shooting, but I think, uh, and I guess it just comes from being a kind of a preparedness nut and a firearms instructor. If I don't have extra ammo uh, with me, I'm a fool, right? And so you can never, you can never have enough ammo. Um, and so why not bring an extra box? It, it's weight, right? Maybe you go smaller, but having extra ammo is a must. And uh, don't don't um don't underestimate the need for that okay um you might end up you know none of you guys but me i might end up taking maybe more than one shot uh, at game uh, i might miss uh and i need to take a second shot but then you also may need another shot uh to finish an animal off and and go for that uh that ethical uh, uh death as quickly as possible um Eric, of course, we all know the most important thing you've got to have in your backpack is what? It's your license and your tags, right? Yeah. So we're going to make sure we've got that. And the thing about uh, about this for me is it's got to be waterproof. Um, and I've got to have it in a waterproof uh, container. And I throw it in the in the in the um, in the in the special zipper pouch of my hunting backpack that's made for this. Yeah. Right? I'm a big fan of the waterproof. It's it's simply it's plastic and Ziploc. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. So um, since we're talking about musts, you can't you can't not talk about this, guys. If you don't have this and you're using leaves, come on, man, uh, bring this. We know what it's for. It's it's uh, it's for what you think it is, but it's also a really good fire starter. Sure. Um, a lot of great options for it. Um, it's it's a last ditch um, for medical supplies as well, so it's it's not bad. Um, then for multiple reasons, um, whether you're processing animals or you're packing up trash or waste, is I've got a bunch of uh, uh, plastic bags. I've got uh, in my pack right now. I've got two, um, and having those, I love multi-use options. Things that you purchase and you say oh this is for x no 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 it's also for y and z and alpha and, and bravo too i got a bunch of options that i can use this for uh, then uh let's talk uh continue on this hydration um where we're talking about our electrolyte tabs um let's talk about uh you gotta have some sort of of canister 
Um, I'm I'm on a big anti-plastics kick right now, and 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 so having my metal canister is great, not just for packing in, but if you got to get in a situation where you've got to purify, then that's a great option for you as well. Um, so let's talk about the pure the purification process. Um, to me, for the money and the weight, talking about what Eric said, um, for the weight, the life straw, and I'm sorry about the whole uh, reverse image things, guys, um, but the life straw is the best bang for the buck. Uh, my wife and I are both have experience with uh, disaster relief and disaster response, um, and uh, having one of these is just a must. And uh, all, ha if you're not familiar with the Life Straw, you simply um, put this into pretty much any kind of fluid, and then um, you suck it through. It takes a lot of pressure to suck it through. Um, it, you suck it through, and it purifies as it's going through, right? And so, really, really good option um, for for some quick hydration. If you can find um, really any good quality uh, puddle of fluid, you're gonna you're gonna use that just fine. So we're still on level one, guys. I still think all of this stuff is level one options. Um, then uh, as, uh, as a kind of junior nutritionist, um, some, some beef jerky and some peanuts, which are going to have, have a long shelf life. Uh, they can be abused and they can be wadded at the bottom of your backpack. Um, and they're going to provide you with some protein and a little bit of energy. Um, and hopefully that gets you through um, any any emergency, hopefully your emergency, well, hopefully you have no emergency, but hopefully your emergency isn't long enough that this is gonna, this is gonna run you out. Um, and then I wanna go to the last and the most important thing in, uh, in at, at level one, and that's gonna be uh, the med kit. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer in not just IFACs, individual first aid kits, um, but uh, actually our class, I don't, can I, can I give away, can I give a hint as to what our class is next month, Eric? Go for it, buddy. Right. So it's how to, how to build a first aid kit is what we're going to talk about, uh, next month. And we're going to talk about this. This is kind of a medium pack. Okay. And what's in a medium pack. Let me share my screen with you and, um, and we'll talk about what's in the medium pack. Um, but there's some, there's some priorities that I think have to be in there. So um, this is the contents of a medium pack. And we talk again, like we talked about with the level one, level two, level three, we talk about comfort versus life-saving. And so I wanna focus on some of the life-saving stuff. And the things that I would really wanna point out to you um, are gonna be your H or uh, H bandage or an Israeli bandage. Um, that's something that is going to help stop. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be compression and it's going to help stop, um, uh, help stop bleeding. Um, your, um, your quick clot, you guys may remember this from World War II movies that you've seen, uh, Band of Brothers or something like that, um, where in World War II, somebody would get shot and they would sprinkle the white powder on them. This is the same thing, generally same chemical concept, but it's now confined to a gauze sponge. And um, what you basically do is you have your entry wound here, you slap that on there, and then you um, cinch it tight with some sort of bandage or, or a t-shirt or something. And that's gonna help with coagulation, gonna help with clotting, help you stop bleeding. Um, I think um, one of the classes uh, we taught a couple months ago was how to stop the bleed. Um, our tourniquets right here, um, that is gotta be, that's gotta be in your pack, you guys. Um, if you've not taken a stop the bleed class to make sure you take one, um, go on to YouTube and, and do a search where Eric and I did a stop the bleed class. And we talked about pressure packing and tourniquets, right? And so tourniquets is the big one. Um, if any of you are, are, are older dudes like me, I'm 54 and you did CPR when you were a kid, you remember what they said? They said, don't do a tourniquet. You're not smart enough. Leave that up to the, to the educated people, right? That's no longer the case. The case is have a tourniquet on your body when you're walking to Walmart, have a tourniquet in your, in your, in your briefcase when you're going to work, um, take one with you at all times and especially take it with you on the hunt. 
Um, the tourniquet is going to be the answer to, to, to stopping the bleed. Um, and and the, the human body, average human body can bleed out in 60 seconds. If you can slap a tourniquet on a gunshot wound or a bite or a fall, um, a compound fracture that's, that's uh, caused a, a massive bleeding, then if you can slap a tourniquet on there or even two tourniquets, you're in, you're in good shape. Um, and then an additional thing that I want to talk about is chest seals, um, especially if we're talking about rifles, right? If you're working with rifles, you're traveling at 2,700 to 3,300 feet per second with a rifle, you get hit in the chest, that is definitely going through, but you've just created two holes in your lungs and without, without getting into the physiology of it too much. If you, if you have two holes in your lungs, pretty good chance you're going to have a difficulty breathing, right? So making sure that you have a set of chest seals, slapping one on the front and one on the back is going to allow uh, yourself or your victim to, uh, to uh, breathe a lot easier. So um, before I pull this down, I want you guys to pull up your phone and take a picture of this slide as you feel you need to. Uh, if you haven't already, but this is what I would consider a medium pack. What's a medium pack? Come back next month, you'll learn more, but it's basically something where you are an hour away from EMS, okay? And it's something that that you are at least an hour away from getting help from somebody who knows who's smarter than you and me, okay? So let's go ahead and, and go back to our uh, our regularly scheduled program. So that's level one. Okay. That's a lot for level one. And I acknowledge that. And, and that can be, that can be weighty, but I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to uh, work with that. The bulk of my turkey hunting is done a, within an hour of my home. Um, but it is remote enough away with zero cell service that I'm uh, I need that. Uh, that's stuff. I, I just can't, I can't go without. And like I said, Half this stuff is on my body or in my car anyway to go to Walmart, to go to the grocery store. You guys just don't be that person that stands around and goes, oh my gosh, what do we do? You're you're the response to that stuff. Okay, so that's my level one. What did I forget? What do you guys think need to be in level one that we haven't put in there, right? Um, now, let's go on to what I consider level two. And some of the stuff, like I say, I fully acknowledge. Some of you guys are going to go, this, this Pettengill guy's crazy. This has got to be a level one issue, okay? So um, level one, I'm going to start with um, my well-charged um, battery backup. So I'm going to have my phone. That's a given. That's that's on my body. I don't even, that's not even in my backpack. Um, I'm usually running Onyx. Um, uh, and I'm, I, I, the older or the newer iPhones will run off of, uh, a cell signal for, uh, SOS, uh, but I'm keeping a, a battery charge with me and, and my phone will last all day, uh, especially since it's not pinging Wi-Fi. Um, but if I've got to be more than a day, this is a must, I've got to have this thing. Um, and then, uh, I want to go into... Uh, just a good quality hunting knife, kind of an all-purpose knife. Uh, and this is probably actually going to be strapped on my side um, and not in my backpack, but it's a good, it, it's definitely stored in my backpack. This could take the place of a, a processing uh, kit, but it could also take the place of, uh, uh, of a survival utility tool um, and, un, and hopefully never a, a defensive uh, weapon as well uh, against two-legged or four-legged predators. Um, but what I also do put in my, in my uh, level two is my processing kit. And I know what you're thinking. The reason, Mike, the reason why it's in level two is because you're not a very good hunter and you don't make your shots all the time. So you don't need this very often, do you? Uh, part of that's true, but, um, the way I figure is if I've got to get down and dirty and I've got to process, uh, my animal, if I've got to, to do it, I can use this. Um, uh, not my preference. My preference is this with my bone saw and, and my, and my, uh, flay knife and everything. This is going to, uh, this is going to help me with skinning and getting through bones and everything. I want this, but is it life-saving? Is it enough comfort that I'm definitely going to include it in level one. And I don't think so. Um, 
then uh, we're going to get, because we've got that, that big hunting knife and because we've got um, our processing, um, I also want to have a, a sharpener. If you've cut through bone for more than about 30 seconds, you know that this is, this is um, something that you're looking for. You cutting, cutting through um, uh, uh, the animal, you need the ability to sharpen. Um, and so this has got a, uh, just a simple um, sharpener here, and then it's got your blade sharpener there, right? The two options. Um, and, and I think a knife without this is, irrelevant you can use a rock but the weight of this doesn't it doesn't concern me that much now i want to talk about um this is comfort unless uh unless it's not right um antibiotic wipes and so not just hand wipes but something that i'm going to use um for processing or for cleaning a wound i've got some of the similar stuff in my first aid kit um, but then I'm also going to have um, uh, disposable um, uh, gloves for processing. Um, again, I love multi-use. And so this could also be used um, as a, a tourniquet in a pinch. It can be used um, to splint uh, with a stick in a pinch. So I love multi-use stuff. Um, that's why I've got this. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so Mike, we've got a little, we've got a few people chiming in and I love, I Talk love it. it. I love, I love the us, discussion. Guys. So some people are saying that level one should include a whistle, mirror and compass. Uh -huh. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And, and a lot of that. Um, so your, your compass, I'm going to use my phone, my phone breaks. Uh, that sucks. Right. But what if your compass breaks? Okay. Compass, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's great. Yeah. A signal, a signal mirror is great. Um uh, uh in my first aid kit, I have a signal mirror. So yes, I'm on board with that. Um, I, I don't include a compass because I trust Onyx so much. Um, I've just I've not had any problems with it, even without cell service. You guys, you guys who use it know you don't need the cell service for it. Right. And so I trust that maybe too much. I'll acknowledge that maybe too much. Yeah. Um, whistle, great option. I don't have a problem with that at all, especially um, a, a, a cheap plastic one. Because uh, like like Eric said, we're talking about weight. So let's get a cheap plastic one. It does the same thing. We talked a little bit about this before the webinar, but uh, what are your thoughts on like Garmin in reach and like those spot devices? What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, I... Dude, I love those things. I don't own one. And that's my next tolerable purchase. What are they? 300 bucks, right? They're no big deal. And then the service is worth it. And for those of you guys who don't know what you're talking, what we're talking about, there's a couple of options. You push the button and it's an emergency beacon and it gets um it gets rescue to you, right? Yeah. Then you have the next step up, which is um the ability to also push the button as one option and uh text as another. And the monthly service is not that expensive. Um, I, I like those a lot. I think if you can afford it and you can afford the service, I think that's a good one to have. I do too. I th we use those, especially on multi-day hunts. And it gives just such peace of mind, especially to your spouse at home. You can yeah. use them to text and say, hey, everything's okay. Yep. Um, one time yeah. I got a text in the back country. And my wife said, the dog just got bit by a rattlesnake. <laughs> That's like, well, the don't, most memorable. Don't, don't tell me that now. What can I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Continue on with level two. All right. Level two. Uh, uh, next one is a, is a good wad of paracord. Um, not not very uh, heavy, but man, the uses of paracord. If you if you just have it in your backpack, do do me a favor. If you've never really used it, buy two. Mm -hmm. and play with one and figure out all the little uses you can do from from stringing up an animal i've 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 had no problem raising a, a big buck with this stuff um uh i've yet to raise a bear or anything like that but i'm i'm pretty confident um 
but you can use it for wound uh, wound issues. You can use it for compression. You can use it to um, to uh, put up with a poncho to make a tent. Uh, extra shoelaces. You know, you, you can use it as a sling for your your rifle, your shotgun if it breaks. Uh, you name it, you can use it, right? And just paracord is just so multifaceted. Um, I love it. Um, so now here's kind of this is what I thought might be kind of controversial. Is um, is my little girl is a secondary item. Right. And those of you guys that are turkey hunters are like, yeah, this is why, yeah, Mike's not a good hunter. That if the, if the, if the young lady is, is a secondary item, then that's why he's not getting a lot of turkeys. Um, but um, my, my decoys, whether it's duck or turkey or whatever it is, um, uh, that's a secondary item. It, it's almost always been with me when it's appropriate. Um, but I, I, again, I like, uh, we talked about weight. Um, right. And I love the, the fact that she's so light um, and uh, she's she's quite the looker. Um, now, this is this is where um, you can start. And we're talking about the talking about the things like the Garmin things. This is where you can start to get a little uh, a little pricey. OK, I'm a big fan of the the Bino harness. And. Here's another thing I'm a big fan of. If anybody has any influence out there, if any of you guys and gals out there have any influence, can you please tell the hunting clothing manufacturers and the backpack producers to never, ever create anything again that isn't harnessed with a magnet, right? The, 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 the reality is uh, that if, if you are going to um, give me snaps and Velcro, when I'm hunting, listen to this, guys. Oh, I just opened my my bino harness because it's got it's got magnets on the back. Again, this that's probably a level three issue, but I love these things. Okay, so then we're talking about um, a good quality set of binos. If you've ever looked through quality glass, you know the difference, right? Um, and go ahead and buy once, cry once, and get yourself a decent quality pair of binos it's still level two issue. Um, and then listen, listen, guys, that magnetic strap. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, and then a, a decent quality range finder. Now you guys are like Pettengill. You're such an old, fo old, old FUD. Um, they come together. Yeah, I know they come together. That's an option to uh, uh, buy once, cry once. I get it. Um, but a good range finder is, is uh, a laser range finder. Uh, understanding they're not always that accurate. They're not always, uh, uh, if it says it, it ranges out to a thousand, you know, it actually ranges out to 500. Um, but I love a harness um, and I love having my, my uh, range finder and my binos right there. Okay. So that's the end of level two. So Eric, do we have any, any challenges, questions? Uh, what do you yeah. think, Mike? So uh, David mentioned that if you're big game hunting binos, should be in level one mm -hmm. like but i i think a lot of it's just defining your level and yeah yeah and that's what half the fun of this is is fighting over this in, in your yeah. own head yeah exactly um so what are your thoughts on like uh like two-way radios do you hunt with other people very often mike what are your thoughts on having like a two-way radio so you can communicate with a buddy yeah, I, I I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I I think that's a good option if you're going with friends and if you're separating. I think that's a great option. Backup batteries, um, and make sure they work before you get out there. Right. Yeah. Um, turn them on. Make sure everybody's on the same channel. Make sure you got backup batteries for for both or, or all units. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not plugging necessarily a specific company, but Garmin has some really good products out there. And I hunt with kids regularly. And one of the things I have in my backpack is they've got a, a GPS that's also a two-way two radio. So every time I'm communicating with, uh, for example, my sons, uh, their coordinates are always being recorded. So I know exactly where they are. And they know where I am. And so to me, that's especially with young kids, it's it's awesome to know, okay, 
they're not six miles away, they're a quarter mile away, and all is well. I, I've got a lot of friends that are my senior that that as you expose them to new technology, first thing is is that FUD mentality. And it's like it's like, oh come on, when I was a kid, we just had the, you know, we had the 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 12 pound uh grand and and we just you know we went out and we shot like oh, okay cool but uh, you know if you can get if you can get hand warmers and foot warmers and text your wife and and uh you know keep your kids in in check then that's okay too I'm yeah right. so martin is talking about two-way radios and he was under the impression that they were illegal they may be illegal in other states but they're completely legal in California. Yeah. And then we've got another comment about rain gear. Um, yeah. What do you do? Do you have a poncho? I know you're in Southern California, but I was down there too. I worked in San Diego County for many years and uh, there were people caught unaware mm -hmm. and even like in a foot of snow sometimes in the, in the higher elevations. What do you do yeah. for rain gear? Do you, are you bringing that? So I'm checking the weather, um, and uh, this is going to be my backup, right? But I'm checking the weather, and uh, I've got my poncho in the closet. If it's anywhere close, it's it's going with me. Yeah. That becomes a level one item. Have you ever been uh, stranded, like in the backcountry overnight? Have you ever had a situation where it's like, man, I... I need, I'm actually staying the night here and were you prepared for it? Um, yes and no. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I got, I got lost. I got, I got a bum steer on my directions and I got lost and, and I had people out looking for me and ended up getting, getting found uh, 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 a lot, a lot further down the, down the road, literally and, 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 and time wise than I wanted to. Uh, yeah. What should have been a um, a two hour hike ended up being about an eight hour hike. That happens, and I think it happens to I was not to, prepared. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's happened to me too. It's even happened on patrol a, a few times, and it's it's a scary thought. The sun's going down, and so I'm with you on the level one and having a light with you. I always carry. A, actually two headlamps with me with spare batteries because there's nothing like having your battery start or your headlamp start to flicker yeah. and not have a spare um so yeah fire starter is huge too and i think along the lines of getting lost um if you're in an area where you can safely have a fire to me that's huge being able to start a fire and keep warm i think it does something for you mentally as well knowing i'm gonna be okay here i can last the i can last throughout the night yeah so nothing like feeling like a going back to your roots and pounding your chest and i make fire <laughs> it's really good stuff that's right all right let me go into level three and then we'll come back for some more questions level three for me has two things um and uh it's just that I view them as non-necessities. I view them as absolute comfort, right? And um, so let's go with number one in that mix. And that's gonna be uh, a chair, right? And some of you guys that got, uh, got uh, butt issues or back issues, like, nope, that's a level one, right? But this one as an option, it uh, uh, I think this is uh, a super generic option, but this goes around your shoulder. Um, and then um, you have the option, you're going to sit close to the ground, right? And so if you're a turkey hunter that, you know, this is kind of nice as opposed to sitting in the wet ground. I typically, 60% of the time, I'm going to sit on my backpack. I'm just going to pull my backpack off and I'm going to, uh, that's why my my toilet paper is shaped like that. But um, <laughs> but this is a nice level three option. If I've, If I'm going by myself and it's maybe wet ground, I'm going to have this as an option. Um, only thing I'm not a fan of is the clanking, right? When you're walking, but if you get out to where you got to go early enough, then it's a, a non-issue. Um, then uh, aiming poles. And uh, the thing about this is if you 
if you aren't practicing alternative platforms, shame on you. You should be practicing your alternative platforms. Don't zero your weapon um, and then assume that that's how you're going to shoot. You're not going to bench your your way out of a, a, a an interaction with a deer or an elk or a pig. Um, having this is is nice, right? Stick works. Side of a tree works. Um, I work with students on creating your own platform. A lot of you may not know that what's the original purpose of a sling? What's what's the purpose of a sling? Is it to carry your rifle on your shoulder or carry your shotgun on the shoulder? The original purpose of the sling was for stabilization, is that you wrap it around your arm, you pull it taut, and you use yourself as a tripod, um, and you stabilize your rifle that way. Um, and that's great. And I can do all that stuff. I can go prone. I can I can uh, sit on my butt and cross my legs. A um, lot of options to get stable. But this sure is nice if you don't have any options. A rock is great. A tree is great. This is really nice, too. But I also, again, I, I said I like multi-purpose stuff. This is actually two-legged. Um, and I only have one leg extended. Um, and I use it as a walking stick as well. And so um, I'll grab here and I'll use it as, as a walking stick uh, uh, until I get to my location. And then I've always got it ready. It's at the right height for me to be able to stand and hunch over and get my shot if I need to. Um, so definitely a comfort item, definitely not a necessity. Um, but if you've ever had buck fever, if you've ever had your heart rate going, your adrenaline dumping, maybe it's not a comfort item. Maybe it becomes a level two. Um, I know I've, I know I've let that arrow go or, or seen that buck in the, in the, in the optic and, and just got my adrenaline dump before I wanted to get it right. Um, so maybe this goes from a level three to a level two for you. Um, but I think this is a good option to, to, to consider. So that is my level one, my level two, my level three for my backpack, for my day pack always going to be with me. Even if I'm going on a multi-day, I'm going to have a bigger pack um, that I'm going to, that I'm going to live out of. Um, if I'm going backwoods, I'm going to have a bigger pack that I'm going to live out of. Um, but this is always going to be with me. Um, and, and I'm going to, that's my, my choice for level one, level two, level three. Where am I crazy? Uh, I think most people are agreeing with you. There's a few comments about, um, for level one, like a space blanket, mm -hmm. super lightweight. We carry those too. And yeah, they can be also be used as signal devices really well. It's kind of shocking how, how good of a signal device it actually is, um, but really good signal device. Um, space blankets are great options too. Yeah. And as far as like multi-use, that's a good one for multi-use, especially uh, like quartering an animal out in the, you know, in the sagebrush on a slope, we've done that a time or two where it's like you're putting, it just keeps things a little bit cleaner. Um, and then Sarah's talking about level three. She adds an extra pair of socks, especially in damp, wet weather. Yeah. It's pretty lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I might even move that to a level, level two, too, as well. I think that's, yeah. above, I think that's above comfort. Yeah. And then a level one, large Ziploc bags for general purpose. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, a Ziploc bag can be used for a lot of stuff. Not only the Ziploc portion, but um, you can, in a pinch, you can use them as gloves, right? Yeah. You, uh, you, you're going to, uh, if you're going to go through water, you're putting your cell phone and your battery in there. A lot of good options uh, to yeah. have, have that on your, on your, uh, on your day pack. Yeah. And then course game bags where you were talking turkey and so yeah game bags are light and I, in my opinion they are multi-use too absolutely, absolutely multi-use yeah um multi -use, we use yeah. them for pillows you know stuff them with like a jacket and use it for a, a pillow and then i mean there's nothing worse than killing an animal way back in the back country and realizing okay the game bags are three miles away. We've done that a time or two. In fact, we did that this last year. <laughs> so, um, you know, one thing that we, I agree wholeheartedly with your, those, the, 
the wipes that you showed, that to me is is absolutely uh, a necessity. Um, you know, even if you, whether you're killing an animal or even, um, you know, nothing worse than seeing somebody prepare a meal at the, <laughs> at the uh, end of the day and realizing, wait, I'm not so sure your hands are that clean. So yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's I know. a really good tip. All of ours aren't that clean. Yeah. And then don't forget about if you if you discharged a shot, that that lead residue is that's pretty bad, you guys. You want to make sure you got your hands clean out of out of that yeah. after that shot. Good point. Um, and then we got a level one roll of tape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know that I take a whole one because that's a that's a that's a large. Uh, but I I've, I I will take off maybe ten feet and then sub roll it down into into something that's more compact. Yeah, and then this person's just commenting upon about your tr like trekking poles, and you went over that. And I, yeah, the older I get, the more I've been using trekking poles, and kind of a multi-purpose thing too. We've even used trekking poles. Uh, you know, just crossed them up and yep. used them as a rest. Yep. Um, but I love the idea of having a rest. And there's so many times where it's that in between. You can't lay prone, and even kneeling isn't ideal. And you're just trying to get a little bit above the vegetation, maybe for a shot. And that's been a necessity for us. If you're going to use that uh, as aiming poles, um, uh, consider having uh, with you a Velcro strap. So yeah. you, X, you X them up and then you Velcro in the middle and get that nice and tight so that right as you're about to take that shot, it doesn't go. Yes. All right. I think, I think we've missed a few times because of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, this is a good suggestion. Surveyor tape. Um, so... I think that is, especially when blood trailing, that's super helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bread, uh, really visible breadcrumbs. Yep, exactly. So, and then someone else is talking about a pen. Did you mention that, Mike? A pen to fill out your tag just in case. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't. But I didn't. I didn't mention it. I didn't mention it, but. This being the channel that it is, that I've got one in here. So <laughs> right on, yeah. As a game warden, I've seen a lot of uh, creative ways to fill out a tag. People <laughs> writing with their, <laughs> trying to write with their lead cartridge uh, back in the day. Dip the dip the uh, the stick in blood and fill it out. Yeah, yeah mosquito spray, uh, bug spray. I'm that that's dependent on the area, but I mean. Once you don't have that, you're gonna want it, right? I, I here's one of those things. I classify it as a level three until you're getting eaten alive, and then I call it a level one. <laughs> That's right. It's like sitting in the comfort of my home. It feels like a level three, but having uh, having had my neck uh, uh, look like a raw hamburger, uh, sometimes it feels like a level one. Yeah. So, do you have like a list? Uh, that you go through when you're preparing to hunt? Do you actually like a grocery list? Hey, this is, and then have that on a computer or do you just do this no, mentally? A smart person would do that. Um, uh, <laughs> but no, I go, I go <laughs> and I usually, I usually add stuff uh, for my third trip because I forgot it for my second trip. And I, re you know, that's how a lot of this gets born is it, it's like, it's like every every trip, it's like, oh, I wish I had that. Oh, better put it in the backpack. Oh, I wish I had that. Better put it in the backpack. Um, yeah. But no, I don't have a list. I just go, I go off of the brain and the feel. Now, to be to be honest, I live this stuff, um, sort of not survival per se, but trauma medicine and preparedness, that kind of, I teach this stuff a lot. And so it's kind of in the brain. Yeah. Um, and so I might consider putting a three by five card together as a check sheet uh, for those of you guys that have real lives. Yeah. And then somebody, yeah, my buddy Dave Shankel is talking about wet wipes and we do that as well. That's just, uh, 
that's that's a lot of comfort and it helps for a variety of reasons. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that being said, I'm so thankful for your time. Thank you so much for uh, talking with us tonight. And thanks for your willingness to continue to serve people. I love that about you, Mike, is um, it doesn't seem like there's a selfish bone in your body. You're always willing to help and um, share your wealth and your experience. And thanks so much for being willing to do December's webinar too, where we'll get into the nitty gritty about what to put in a med kit. Yep. Looking forward to doing that one. And uh, if you guys like that, uh, like this one, you guys will love that one. It's something, it's not going to just going to cover, um, it's not just going to cover what we're uh, talking about with hunting. It's going to cover your daily life. So right. forward to that as well. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Talk to you later. See you guys. Yeah.